Happy New Year, everyone. It's early January here in sunny Southern California. I'm in Zone 10B. In today's video, I'll take you on a tour of our container garden and harvest some veggies. I'll also be doing some chores. I'll be making protective cages for the veggies to protect against rats who've been munching on our vegetables. As a bonus, stick around to the end because I'll show you how I'm refreshing our leaf mold project. Please stay tuned. In preparing for today's harvest, I was really looking forward to harvesting a lot of these royal snow peas. Really interesting color, as you can see, they're purple and they're very, very tasty. The only difference between these and uh, green snow peas is the color when you cook them, the water turns blue. Otherwise, they taste exactly the same. They're very, very tasty. Well, when I came out today, I noticed that most of the snow peas were gone, only a few were left. I checked my ring camera and sure enough, it was the rats that climbed up under the trellis and stole these snow peas. So I'll go ahead and harvest what I have left and try to figure out what to do about these darn rats. Take a look at the difference between these three Brussels sprout plants. As you can see, this one looks really nice and healthy because it was protected with a wire cage. However, the one next to it wasn't, and you can see that most of the leaves have been taken, and that was caused by rats. I actually captured the rats on my video camera eating those leaves. And the one next to it, you can see that there are holes in some of these leaves, and that was caused by the caterpillars of the white cabbage butterfly. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some protective cages to guard against the uh, butterflies as well as the rats. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with making a protective cage. Here's the size pot that I wanna make the protective cage for. The first step is take the measurement of the circumference, which is gonna be the distance around the pot. So I have a tape measure here with some uh, duct tape. I'm just gonna go ahead and tape it down and then wind the tape measure around the pot, making sure to go to that flared edge because it does uh, flare out. I don't wanna go here, but I wanna go down here because that's gonna be a bigger circumference and I want the pot to be able to fit over it. So I'll keep that tape measure tight around the lip, go all the way around, and finish right about here. Okay, so that measurement is a little over 51 inches, but I'm gonna add a couple of inches just to make sure that that cage fits over the pot. So my measurement is 53 inches. The material that I'm using to make this protective cage is this galvanized wire mesh hardware cloth. The roll is three feet wide. Once the cage is assembled, that will actually be the height of the cage. I'm gonna go ahead and roll out this hardware cloth. And I am going to cut at 53 inches, which is gonna be right here. Remember, 53 inches is the circumference of the pot. So I've just made a little mark there. I'm gonna double check my measurements. So this is at zero, this is at 53. Double check, yes, it's gonna be 53 and I'm gonna just cut straight through. Okay, the next step is to connect the ends and I'll be using the zip ties to connect the ends together. So I'm gonna take this section and start to roll it and have it take the shape of a cage. This makes it a little easier. Okay, now I'm gonna take this end, take it over here using this zip tie, connect the ends together. Okay, so that's one. A quick and dirty way to make the top of the cage is to lay a section of the wire mesh 
hardware cloth on top of the pot and then just anchor it down. Take your snippers and just simply follow along the outside edge that you measured to when you made your circumference. Okay, there's the top. Let's go ahead and see how it fits. All right, let's see how this fits. It looks pretty good. So next, I'm going to take the zip ties and tie the top to the cage. Now that we have the cage assembled, I'm going to go ahead and snip off the tag end of these zip ties. Okay, I think we're done. Let's go see how it fits on top of the pot. All right, it's the moment of truth. Let's see if this fits. Here is the Brussels sprout plant that got chewed up by the rat. So I'm going to position this cage over the pot, slide it down, and yes, looks good. Here's the protective cage over that damaged Brussels sprout plant, and it's my hope that that plant will recover over time. As the plant grows, I'll prop the bottom of this cage up with pavers to raise the cage and allow the plant plenty of room to grow. I have three pots of a dwarf pak choy that I have grown in succession. These are the younger plants. It is called Shakushima, and here's a seed packet from the Kitazawa Seed Company. These plants are a little older, so we're going to go ahead and harvest them. As you can see, one of them is bolting. And I will also harvest the one next to it. Ginger will place these in a dish called teppanyaki. In this pot, I have a Japanese turnip called Tokyo Cross, and there you can see them forming. These seeds were started back in November. Here is the seed packet from the Kikizawa Seed Company. Here's a pot of the same Japanese turnip, Tokyo Cross. I started these one month earlier than the other pot. These were started in October. And as you can see, they're about ready to be harvested. You'll notice that I have some twine holding up the leaves. And the reason for that is because I covered these with a wire protective cage and the reason I am protecting these is because yes the rats got to them so there are a couple down there that they munched on I was really surprised by that because they've never done that before so anyway just got to do what you got to do to protect your vegetables but most of them are in pretty good shape
In this pot, I have watermelon radishes. As you can see from the seed packet, they have a really interesting flesh, red on the inside and white on the outside. And it looks like some of them are ready to be harvested. Here I have a young kale plant. This is La Cienado, grown from seed. Detroit red beets. Green onions. More La Cienado kale. These beets are called Golden Boy, looking really good, still young. Back in these two grow bags, I have daikon radishes. And in these two pots, I have carrots grown in succession. Let's go ahead and harvest some of these. Okay, let's go ahead and harvest some of these carrots. There's a small one there. There's a little bigger one here, that's good. We'll be snacking on these so they don't have to be really big. These are actually the perfect size, little baby carrots. Okay. All right, so those are perfect to snack on. Next to the carrots are these two pots of Corvair spinach. And this spinach has been amazing. It has been so prolific in growing a lot of leaves. I've harvested this at least four times. And each time it comes back with these huge leaves. Very, very happy with this variety of spinach. So let's go ahead and pick some of this. Next to the spinach, I have garlic. I'm growing this for the first time. And all the plants have come up. Planted this back in November. And on the back wall, I have parsley and mint, thyme, and basil. So there you have it. This is our January veggie garden tour. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's take a look at what we harvested today. This required two baskets, and it goes to show you just how productive a container garden can be. Here we have royal snow peas, carrots, watermelon radishes, satsuma sweet potatoes, dwarf bok choy, corvair spinach, and Tokyo cross turnips. Please take a look at the links in the description where I have videos related to this garden. Please consider subscribing to our channel. We would really appreciate your support. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Let's take a look at how this leaf mold project is coming along. So in this trash can, you can see these leaves down at the bottom. They've been shredded. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that and wet it down and then uh, refresh it with some more leaves. I'm going to refresh the leaf mold by adding these shredded leaves that I have stored. But before I do that, I'm going to shred them again.
All right, let's go ahead and refresh this leaf mold by adding the shredded leaves. And as you can see, those leaves are finely shredded and that's gonna help in the decomposition process. It'll go a lot faster than if I just use whole leaves. That's good, let's just go ahead and add some water to that. All right, we have this leaf mold been refreshed. I started by turning the existing leaves and then adding water. We added more shredded leaves and added more water. Over time, I'll continue to add shredded leaves because the level will go down and it becomes quite dense over time. I'll also add water, oh, like once every two or three weeks and keep it covered. This should be ready anywhere from 10 months to about a year.